Ahoy there, friends. Ciao. In this episode of Sailing Brittily, we stock our boat with provisions, don a mask and snorkel to clean our very dirty hull, and make some repairs to our outboard engine. We also show you how our folding tender unfolds and can be sailed, and then talk you through our passage planning before we set sail on the Italian Riviera. We arrived back at our boat after being away for five whole months. And you never know what to expect when you open your boat after being away for such a long time. How's she looking? Quite tidy. <laughs> Here we are then, home sweet home. Nearly dinner time. Yes. And what are we having? Piedina. Piedina. They look a bit like tortilla, maybe. Okay, so what do you do with these then? Uh. <laughs> Apart from break them. <laughs> uh, you put inside what you want cheese and vegetables and meat. Okay. And prosciutto, ham. So, how are we going to be having them tonight? What are we putting in them? Uh, we're going to put cheese. And rocket and tomato. Okay. <laughs> it's a bit thick. Wow. <laughs> Ready. and delicious. Oops. Good morning. Right, let's go and have a look at what kind of day it is today. We both slept well. Even though Rosanna accused me of uh, hugging all the covers, didn't we? Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. I think she must be just making it up. Here is the world which awaits us outside. It was then time for me to fix the shear pin on our outboard propeller. As soon as I removed the propeller and drive hub, I saw that I'd bought the wrong kind of shear pin. It was too long. This wasn't a problem though. All I did was marked out the length that I wanted, got a set of snips and made a thin line around the circumference of the pin to act as a stress raiser. And then all I had to do was apply some bending moment and the pin snapped exactly where I wanted it to. This technique works with lots of different materials, not just metal, so it's a very handy trick to know. We didn't have the correct size split pin on board with which to hold the prop in position. So I made an alternative by straightening out a stainless steel cotter ring with a set of pliers. It worked well and is still holding the prop on today. So 
time to eat again and for lunch we're having pasta with artichokes and a cream sauce with parmesan and if you'd like to know how to make this then leave some comments and if we see that there's interest then we'll make a recipe video for this. What's going on darling? Tiny tiny bit of wind. <laughs> So it looked like this engine was working without any problems, um, which was true, it ran, which is nice, considering it's been sitting here for five months with that old petrol inside. Um, but what actually happened was, which I didn't get on film, but when I stopped this engine, it started to overflow with petrol or gasoline for our American friends. So we now have to investigate this. It doesn't owe us anything, this engine, it was 50 euros, which is about $60, so can't complain that it's given us a couple of issues. I'm going to remove the carburetor and then disassemble it and see if I can find out what the problem is. There's probably, I believe in the bottom of this, there is a float and that acts upon a small valve, little needle valve, and that cuts off the fuel supply once it gets to the correct level. If that's stuck, then it continues to supply fuel, which then is probably what happened here. So I'll take this apart and we'll have a look. Let's have a look at this then. Well, one of those two had a plain washer and one didn't. So that tells me that somebody else has done this before. Not surprising as this engine is 30 years old, but maybe it's been given issues for somebody in the past. It's actually really clean. I was expecting this to be full of gunk, but it's very clean. And this requires further investigation on my part. Okay, so this is quite dirty and gunked up. I'll give that a good clean out. That's going to be very difficult to do without dropping the flipping nuts in the sea. So I've put the carb back on and I just went to start the engine, pulled the cord and it didn't feel too good so I thought, oh, and also it didn't retract so I had to take the cover off and then I've just removed the cover now. As I did that I have this horrible mess of springiness unspring itself in my hands. So. I'm sure this is going to be a lot of fun to get back on. That's enough of my ugly mug. Here's a beautiful boat and a beautiful bay and my beautiful wife. By the end of the day, the engine was working well. And for dinner this evening, we've got curried potatoes with beans and some ham.
buongiorno vuoi il caffè? Okay, so the outboard propeller is sorted. Now I need to go, more importantly, onto the main propeller of the boat. Uh, I usually bag it up when we go away, so I have to remove the bag, check out the condition of the propeller, see if it needs any work. If not, I'll give it a clean up. While I'm down there, I'll also do the rudder, and then we'll have full control over the boat. Then we've got the option where I can either clean the hull here in the marina, or if we want to go to a nice anchorage somewhere, then we'll be able to maneuver the boat around, and I'll have that option as well. So I'll take this little camera with me, let's go and have a look at what's going on down there. We are planning to leave soon, so let's go and get some provisions. Yay! Well, that was a successful shopping trip. And now we've got to get this in the boat and then find somewhere to put it all away. All the stores are away, it's been a really busy day today and we're both tired, we want something really quick and easy to eat and I've got just the thing in mind. It took us a couple of years to work this out, when we were on the boat we couldn't eat pizza unless we went and bought it from a pizzeria, but then we worked this out. If you buy some little mini frozen pizzas, then you can stick them in the pan. I know any Italian viewers are watching this probably screaming at their screens, but hey, there we are. I can say they're still tasty. Yeah, there you go then. So Even if you don't have an oven, you'll find yeah. a way to have a pizza. So it's not exactly gourmet food, but no, it's, nice. it's very convenient and it's tasty. This morning we've been thinking about where we want to go with the boat. Uh, at the moment we are in La Spezia and we were thinking to go to Isola d'Elba and maybe stopping in Capraia, which is another island, or potentially in Livorno, uh, just to break the journey. Um, but then we've been looking at the weather conditions and we change our plan. Yeah, I'll just show you that quickly. Uh, there we are. If we were to go down to Elba, down here, then we'd be putting ourselves right into this area of bad weather that's going to blow through with about 35 knots of wind and given that Rosella is currently pregnant we yeah. want the minimum stress <laughs> yeah, possible. Uh, exactly, Minimum's a relaxing stress. holiday. Yeah. Um, so we have decided to go to um, just going home in the Ligurian coast and we're going to go in Sester Levante and so we pass by uh, Cinque Terre and then probably we're gonna go to Rapallo, Santa Margherita, Portofino but our plants are open so we're just gonna look how the weather is and just stop where we fancy to stop. Yeah, we're gonna work with nature and just enjoy a nice relaxing holiday. Yeah. Now that we know where we're going, we're getting ready to leave. So Rossella is doing some things inside the boat, uh, getting some washing done, things like that. And I, earlier on today, I tested the inboard engine on the boat. That's working great, which is good. And I'd like to give the outboard engine a proper test. So I'm gonna get our little folding tender out and stick the engine on it and go for a spin, see how the engine's performing after I did the, uh, the job on it the other day. Here's our tender folded down. It's only four inches wide or 10 centimeters. It's an eight foot long boat and I'll open it up now and give you a look at it. Mm. 
We normally launch this from the side of our small boat, but on this occasion I'm going to be putting it in from the pontoon and I'll show you just how easy it is. Now I'm no expert rower, but watch how easy this thing rows. Well, I'm happy with how that went. I had to mess around a little bit with the fuel mixture, but now it seems to be running quite reliably, so we have a outboard engine. I'm, uh, I'm going to take it for a little sail now. I'm really happy with that little tender jaunt. I went right across the other side of the bay there, despite there being very, very little wind. So happy with that and um, put the tender away now. Hello, we're leaving this morning. Uh, my face is a bit annoyed because uh, a very short time ago, I dropped the action camera that we've got into the sea and it wasn't in its waterproof case. So that is dead. Uh, I'm gutted because you know I wanted to get footage for you of this trip with that camera. I already had some actually yesterday. I went out on the tender and I was planing around. Really cool with footage anyway. That's gone. Um, so tough. These things happen. And uh, then I've just filled up the jerry can. Oh, there we go. The only water jerry can that we've got is leaking. So we've got about 120 litres of water on this boat, which isn't very much if you're both living anchor as we plan to do for the next period that's not ideal so what I'm gonna to have to do with this I, I don't really have any other option other than I'll dry this thoroughly and then I'll use some araldite some two-part epoxy and I'll just patch this with that and then we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed that we have the facility for transferring fresh water from the shore to the boat because if not I'm gonna go and have to buy another jerry can and in the Italian Riviera Portofino those kind of places you don't want to be buying marine items not really. So there we are. Let's crack on. Handy stuff to have on board this actually for lots of different reasons. And we'll see if it works on this occasion or not. After spending a busy four days on the boat, we were finally ready to leave.
time to go sailing. We've been motoring for an hour and a half and um, I'm going to pretend Rosella's not here, she's going to be filming and I'm just going to pretend I'm single-handed and use this little tiller blocking device to keep the boat headed into wind and uh, yeah I'll just put the sails up so let's see how it goes. And we're sailing. Relax. Time for an healthy lunch. Prepared by Rosella so that it's very easy for us to eat on the move. The boat's been driving itself for about the past 10 minutes which is handy while we're having our lunch and in the meantime we can just relax and enjoy the view. We made good progress along the coast towards our first anchorage of the trip. Join us in the next episode to see where the wind takes us. If you have any suggestion for us, comment below. And if you have enjoyed this video, please like it and share it to help our channel grow. We'll see you next time. Ciao! Ciao.